repairing a south with 12 inch steam pump. This one is part 9, potential problems, making some 4 BA studs for the steam chest, fitting the new valves in place, followed by a test run using compressed air. The holes drilled through the steam chest are 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. This is a piece of steel bar that's the same diameter as the holes. Threading 4 BA directly onto a 532 rod is not the thing I want to do because it's a bit big. Instead I'm going to use some of this stuff. This is 964 of an inch in diameter. And on my digital caliper set to metric it comes out at 3.6 millimeters. And without further ado it's over to the Boxford lathe to thread the ends of the bar. I applied a drop of metal cutting lubricant to the bar just to make the threading easier and get a better finish. As you can see I'm doing this entirely by hand. First of all I need to find out how far I need to thread the end that's going to go into the block. And the best way to find that out is to cut a thread on the end of the piece of bar, take it out of the chuck and try a test fit in the cylinder block. I cut the four lengths of this steel bar slightly oversized to allow this to happen. When I first tried this thread length in the cylinder block it was a little bit too long so I ground some off and tried it again and now the length of the thread matches the thread in the casting. It's not that important but it's just a nice touch to make the threads go all the way into the casting. Before I can proceed I need to mark the length of the thread on the other end. This clip is before I cut the four pieces and as you can see the felt tip pen mark is a bit too far out. Eventually though I cut them all to the same length. All it required then was some mass production and here we go. I need to thread both ends of the pieces of bar. One thread needs to be shorter than the other. How do I know how long the thread is? Well, I just count the revolutions of the die. For instance, 12 rotations gave me just the right size of thread for the outer end. I have most of the dies that I use frequently preloaded into these holders. And here I'm using one of these holders with the guide that I made that fits into the tailstock. The idea of buying a proper tailstock die holder to suit every die that I have would have been far too expensive. A while ago I bought quite a few of this type of die holder from Blackgates Engineering. Time to screw in the studs. I'll use a bit of help from the camera. This pump is not very well made at all and as you can see there are only four threaded stud holes. The other six small holes around the edge of the steam chest have not been completed for some reason. With the steam chest held firmly in place I'm checking that my valves fit ok and indeed they do. These four studs are still a little bit too long, I had to shorten them somewhat. I also polished up the end of the studs where they are visible. But when I get to the final assembly I'll probably shorten them a bit more too. Please be aware that this is not the final assembly, it's just to allow me to test it and see whether it works. Time to apply some compressed air. It's blowing a bit. I knew it wasn't going to work, it's not well made enough to work. What I now need to do is remove this cover. I will eventually remove covers from both ends. But for now this one will do. Oh yes and look, surprise surprise. Here we have what I would term a potential problem and this is potential problem number one. Silicone rubber sealant in the mechanism where it's really not supposed to be. And moving on straight away to potential problem number two, watch the compressed air blowing past the shuttle piston. The shuttle piston is not a very good fit in its cylinder. And it is also not the same shape as the one on the drawing. This is potential problem number three. It is working, it's going up and down, but with the amount of air pressure that I'm pumping in it should be a lot snappier than this. I'm going to temporarily refit this cover plate. And here is potential problem number four. There's quite a lot of leakage from the cover plate. Refitting a bolt in the hole stopped the leak. I will be making a gasket for this part. I thought I would try an AB comparison. This is my 12 inch Southwood pump, built by Mr. Don English and modified as you can see. You can see two things. First of all, this one works. And look at the mechanism that operates the valve. The pump that I'm working on has the standard mechanism as shown on the drawing, well, more or less anyway. When I compare the two pumps with the pistons at the bottom of the stroke, you can see that there is a difference. This one is potential problem number five. I'm repositioning it in the same place as it is on the other pump. I think this is a stainless steel Allen cap head bolt and they're not ideal for this job. Stainless steel is not all that strong. 
Here is potential problem number six. The valve operating mechanism is not right. I'm double checking the ports. As you can see, when I inject compressed air into these two ports, the piston moves up and down. So there's nothing really wrong with that. When I reassemble the steam chest and put the valves in, here is potential problem number seven. Please see problem number one. This entire mechanism doesn't feel right. It sort of gripes and grinds. It's horrible. This is not helped by the fact that one of the Allen caphead bolts has the end chewed up. These Allen caphead bolts are M4, so I discarded them and used a pair of commercial hexagon head bolts. The pump mechanism started to feel a good bit better after this job, because the two bars were held firmly in place where they needed to be held firmly in place. I'll try some more compressed air. Suddenly the pump started to work, it's blowing badly and it keeps stopping, but at least it's moving as it should. I undid the lock nuts on the valve actuating shaft, that allowed me to reposition them. The pump didn't work all the time, it kept stopping, but it's better than it was. It's blowing badly, if I remember rightly they're not supposed to do this, I think I know what that is too. At least this mess of a pump is now moving in the right direction. The odd thing is, as I'm working on it, some other people have been here before. I can feel it. I'm not the first person to have messed around with this unsuccessful pump. At this point I was just messing about with the valve timing, and so I think I know what to do now. I suppose I could open the workshop door and throw it into the garden. I won't be doing that, I have more patience than I need. In the next episode I will be dismantling the steam chest completely and doing something with the shuttle piston that leaks, starting by making a new one that's the right size and shape. And then hopefully, after a while and a lot of messing about, I should be able to get this pump to run like this one. I bought this one from my friend Don English at Jubilee Fittings. He made it a while ago, and it runs beautifully. It's like a Swiss watch. I'm toying with the idea of fitting this to my traction engine, but I'm not sure yet. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.